Hello everyone and welcome to week two of this month's unit on believing in your magic. So you all have noticed that in the introduction and last week I had two books that I talked about which had played into either personal experiences that led to my own exploration of my personal magic and my own journey, or as with last week, it was a book that I was nudged to bring up because of its relationship to last week's focus. This week, I did not get any nudge as to what book I should talk about, what book may relate to this week. And I asked the dwarves and said, so do you have a book that you want me to talk about? Do you have a specific text that I can bring up before I relay what you wish to say about this particular practice of believing in our magic. And <laughs> the lovely, lovely, lovely um, female dwarf who I've connected with for this particular unit and who has a message that she wishes to relay to all of you said, no, 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 the book is you. You are the book. And she wanted me to share a little bit about my experiences with creativity specifically. And I told her, really? Because you do realize that's opening up a huge, huge topic for me that has been absolutely central to so much that I've done and I've thought about my whole life so far and she was like that's why you need to tell your story <laughs> so as briefly as possible I am here to share with all of you first my story and then Serafina the lovely dwarf woman who is here today to share with us some of her wisdom I will channel her message as well. So creativity. Like every little child, I was very imaginative and I dreamed up things. I was potentially more imaginative than other children. There's a whole sliding scale, honestly, of imagination with children. I've got brothers who were a lot more interested in memorizing all of the facts in books about animals or dinosaurs or every single thing that was in one of the Guinness World Records books rather than writing imaginative stories or thinking of imaginative things. So when I say most children are extremely imaginative and tell stories when they're younger, it's absolutely a sliding scale that I'm sure all of you are totally aware of. My point, though, is that we all come up, as we are children, in front of what the rest of society sees as creative or creativity. And this definition of good and bad art. And it's these things that the adults that many of us as children grew up around, the society that many of us have grown up around, that leads some of us down those paths of thinking that we're not creative or 
that we're not artistic and then that imaginative ability gets lost because if you don't practice something it's just going to fade away same as if you were not going to do 20 reps <laughs> on a particular arm muscle that muscle's going to shrink so for myself as a child i fortunately never had anyone say specifically to me that i was not creative or i was not artistic or whatever people tend to say instead i had a friend who was considered very artistic everybody always complimented on her on her creative ability on her drawings on all the crafts that she did and she was always doing crafts and that's one thing that i liked about her anytime my mom had her come over for a play date we would always do crafts together which i really enjoyed because it meant i could just sit and delve into making something out of clay and beads and glue and glitter or whatever we were doing that particular day and I didn't necessarily have to be social. <laughs> so I enjoyed it, but I still had some of that underlying feeling of, well, I'm not as good as my friend. And that colored how I began to approach creativity as I grew up particularly when I got into the teaching program and was going toward my education degree. And more than ever, I found myself connecting back in with kids of all different ages, because when I was going through my teaching degree, I got a chance to work with both the young kids as well as the teenagers that I was specifically going in to teach as a high school teacher. And across the board, there was so many blocks against creativity. And because it was absolutely integral for me hanging on to magic, for hanging on to a belief in spirit, even though through my teenage years and even a little bit then when I was going through that education degree, I had cut myself off from that connection with spirit. Despite that, creativity, the imagination was what kept things going, kept a thread there so that here I can be today, reconnecting and absolutely revitalized and back to the full belief, the connection and more that I had when I was very young. So one thing I want to focus on that I ended up doing as a final presentation and project for my education degree was centered around this idea, and yes, it's a little bit of a crazy, silly pun. I happen to like them. <laughs> the creative tree. <laughs> yes, I know, it's a pun. The creative tree was my visualization of what creativity should be, what it is. And what I, as a teacher, was making my foundation, what I was making for my resolution, that any time I'd step into a classroom, everything I did was going to return back to this idea of the creativity. tree. The creativity tree was technically a branch that had fallen off of a bigger tree that I found out on a walk and I attached to it 
many, many, many pieces of paper that were in the shapes of leaves. And on these paper leaves, I wrote myself many different prompts and things that I had imagined when I was younger, things that I imagined even then in my early 20s. And then I had a whole stack that I passed around to my cohort, to visitors that were coming to see my presentation, to professors, and so on. Anybody who came up, I'd give them a leaf and I told them, I want you to write down what your creativity is. What is your magic? How do you define it? What do you think of it? What, what does it feel like to you? I gave them a whole bunch of just big question-based prompts and told them, just put down whatever is the first thing that comes to mind. And at the end of the day, what I had was this tree full of paper leaves that had everything from dictionary definitions of creativity to personal definitions of creativity to people sharing their personal experiences where they talked about how as a child they felt like they weren't creative, or how now they were rediscovering it, or how they wanted to rediscover it, or how they didn't think they were imaginative at all, or questions back to me of, is there such a thing as creativity? Is there good and bad creativity, and so on and so forth, and so many different things that people were just putting out there. There were their questions, their queries, their wonderings, their joys, their hopes, their fears, all around this particular topic. And this is what every time I stepped into a classroom, I would always, always get my students to express just personally in their own daily journals. Sometimes I'd have open sharing sessions or I'd get them to share in groups or they'd write things down anonymously and share those around. And it created a safe space that set the tone of whatever was about to get explored, whether it was just the lesson of the day, or a particular unit that was going to start for the next few weeks, or the very beginning of the whole semester. And it allowed students, and it inspired those people, uh, when I had that particular um, presentation, to explore within themselves the different blocks, the different desires, the different questions that they had around creativity, which opens the door to that willingness to start re rediscovering it and re-exploring it and having that okay to get messy, to be messy, and to kick the idea of perfection and good and bad out the back door. <laughs> because everybody has different ideas. Everybody has had different experiences. So you can't define it. There is no definition. And that's the beauty of it. As well as the thing that, yes, is absolutely a constant exploration. So, Serafina has just said she wishes to speak and has her own wisdom to offer in regards to how we can approach the idea of creativity. <laughs> she says, she l likes my phrasing of getting messy. <laughs> getting messy, she says, is 
what your lifetimes here are about. They're not about lining things up in neat and tidy rows. They're not about understanding anything. They are about acknowledging that all that is flows so constantly. It flows constantly and thereby can never be pinned down, she says. The flow is moving and so there is no definition. There is no way to ever understand and that is what I encourage all of you to look to word instead. The acknowledgement that you don't understand and there is no understanding. That there is only surrendering to the unknown, letting the unknown buoy you and support you and let yourself go with the flow. Let yourself go with the flow. Let yourself create without plan, without desire, without any expectation, without any list, Do not plan, just create. Because in this act of creating without plan, you practice the art of surrendering. You practice the art of flow. And the more you do this, the more you will surrender without thought, the more you will be in flow without intention. You just will be. And your being will be flow. This starts, dear ones, with Creation that is messy. Creation that has no borders. Creation that may start in one form and it will flow into hundreds. And this creation, dear ones, I encourage each of you to work with your physical reality and create something physical so that you may experience with your physical body what messy creation is like so that with your physical body you can begin to feel what messy creation is like that is surrendered and in flow and allows you to practice letting go of definitions that call your work good, bad, perfect, art. 
as each and every of these thoughts arises when you create something physical, acknowledge it, identify it, and then tell it you no longer need it because you are in the act of flow. You are in the act of surrendering. And you do not need the boundaries that you have worked with to this point or that have still remained despite the work that you may have already done. Create, dear ones. Bring yourself into being with your own physicality. Practice this, dear ones. It will not happen overnight. It may take many, many creations, but know this, when you decide to create without borders, to create without a plan, you have just made the first step in letting go and going with the flow. She's made a sharp nod. She's finished. Whew. Wow. All right. <laughs> so have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you next week. Goodbye for now.